Well, I think there's one, there's one more. Oh. <coughs> yeah. My name's uh, Patrick McKenna, uh, 20 Marmont Circle. Uh, I understood that you have deliveries twice a week. And also that the, the shelf life of the uh, population of these, uh, this poultry, live poultry, is two weeks. So, and you said after two weeks you have to get rid of them if they're not sold. So that would indicate to me that every, twice a week, you have to get rid of stock that has not sold. Is that correct? Uh, no, not in this. Uh, usually, uh, like I will uh, uh, make sure that I make the right orders. I will know from the beginning of the, uh, like let's say if I wanted to start this week from today, I will order whatever I need. And then two, three, four days, uh, and then I'll make another order. And then I make sure every Sunday it, we don't have any left. The store and every Sunday. That, that's this way why I keep everything empty until Sunday. So this way the employees will have a chance. And then and we will move chicken uh, from one cage to another and then we will uh, wash the store, the whole store. Okay. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's, I mean, uh, uh, if you make the, the orders, it depends. You can't just load the chicken every time they come. I can just order five coops. Uh, they come like eight, eight chicken a coop. I can order just five coops. And they bring it and then I. Uh, uh, if it doesn't sell by three, four days, I'll understand. I'm not going to order more. Okay, thank you. Uh, you said that uh, you expect to sell most of your product on Sundays. The weekend, Saturday, Sunday, yes. Okay, how many, how many customers do you anticipate having on any one Saturday or any one Sunday? Yeah, about maybe uh, Saturday, Sunday would be the busiest. Yeah, okay. so, so Saturday, Sunday, uh, to be honest with you, over here, I don't know yet because I will, uh, it's a new business, but I'm expecting to maybe about 21, 22 customers, 25 customers. In one day? In one day. So you think that the parking of 10 spots at that location Six. is sufficient uh, it's not, to service I, I don't that think many I'm customers? Yes, I don't think it's going to be a problem with parking. Why? Because they, will sometimes, they don't come all in one time. Yeah. It's going to be from 8 in the morning all the way to 6. Some people, they make phone calls, and they just come and pick it up and go. So is your testimony that you'll have 22 or 25 customers at one time, or during the no, course no, of? during the day. During the course, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, some, each, each customer is not, they're, they're huge. Like about $60, $70. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, just one chicken, one chicken. The processor you use for the hot water, is that gas or water? It's gas. Gas. Is there, is there, <coughs> Do your construction plans include a sprinkler system? Where the gas fire devices are? For fire? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Of course, it's a small uh, thing that will come out like any other hot, hot water machine. Just a hot no, water no, no, machine. No, no, no. no. He means, right. if the barrel requires or you have yes. sprinklers, like they don't even have Yeah, no, I know, I know, for the fire. Okay. Yes, yes, we will do. Yeah, we will have uh, 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 also a fire uh, alarm, and we will have like any other restaurant. But the machine we have, the type of machine for the, the hot water machine is different. It's not like an oven. Okay, or thank it, you. It's different. It's like a hot water tank we have in, your, in the house. And uh, probably my last question would be: uh, uh, How do you dispose of the feathers and the entrails? removed from these birds. Okay, well, what we do is uh, each machine, you see, feather machine has a, a, a screen, a screen. All the feather will come out automatically to the screen, and then the water will be drained, and, uh, and the bottom of the machine have, we have a, a drain. So later on, after the we finish, like maybe uh, one the 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 the, 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 um, the screen is, is is full of feather, we take it out and put in the the garbage bag and put in the freezer. We don't keep any feather outside. We throw the feather, all the feather we throw trash. But uh, we keep so, all our trash, from feather, <coughs> testing, everything inside yeah. the, the, the So a good freezer. percentage of the feathers go down the drain? No, yeah. no, there's no feather. No, we have, we have uh, they're all okay. protected. All, all right, I misunderstood you, I'm sorry. Yeah. And what about the entrails from the, from the, uh, the bird when you, when you clean them? Yeah, when, when we clean the, the chicken, we have a cleaning room. We open the chicken, take the intestine out. Many people eat the liver and the... Uh, and then it's a small intestine. We put them in a small container on the table. When the container is full, we bag it and, and put the container and, and the, the bag in, in the, the freezer. We don't keep any... Uh, 
uh, stuff or meat or, or feather. Or That's something. all I have. Thank you. Thank you. The last one, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Noah Oyenika. Uh, I stay in Greenway, Philadelphia. I'm one of his employees. Yeah, I'm the one that managed Camden. And I'm sorry, but this, these are questions that, oh, that the folks have specifically for the witness. Yours yeah. is a general comment, I think. Is that yeah. correct? Okay. So if there's no more questions for this particular witness, I'm going to. I suggest you sit down, we can have general comment, and I know you have arguments for this. Yes. Yeah. Borough's calling no employees, Archie. I'm sorry? The borough's calling no, no uh, witnesses at this time. Okay, so uh, any other specific questions for this witness other than general comment? Okay, okay, thank you. Um, I, think, I think it's appropriate. Any general comments I, I, from, the, from the audience, just in, in general support or disagreement or whatnot, and please do keep it brief and don't make it repetitious of the questions that have been asked already of the, of the witness. Hi, good night. My name is Rand Gardner. I'm from 12 North, uh, Chestnut Street, Derby. I always go out woodland and buy chicken. And every time I go and buy chicken, I always see their cleaning. And I think he's doing a good job, you know? That's okay. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Gentlemen in the blue, you can say your comment name. All right. Uh, firstly, before I started working with him, I was thinking chicken job or the live in chicken is different. So when I started working with him, I see the everything is different from my thought. I never knew I'm going to last with him. I've been working with him now for like two years. So I moved from Woodland to Camden. I've been working in Camden now for a year and a half. I'm the one heading Camden. Everything there about chicken is different from the way we think. The thought is different. The cleaning is different. Like today, I have an inspector today. She never told me she's coming. I just saw her coming in. She came, she counted the chicken, she tested them with the testing tube, and she gave me the certificate, satisfactory. Every three months, we do cleaning. For a whole day, we never open because we sanitize everywhere. The normal shelf, we clean twice a day. I have a lot of customers, when they come, they see us cleaning, they give me separate tips. I deal with a lot of Spanish. I deal with police people in Camden, they come to buy chicken. So the thought about chicken is very, very different. But when you head chicken place, you think it's different, you think it's dead. I can, I can agree, the way people, the take care of the place is, is different. But him is different. All the surroundings, all the neighborhood. All right, let me give you one example. When they come for the trash, the trash truck, they make deli on the floor. We have to clean everything from the beginning to the end. Even the neighbors, some neighbors. I have a lady there. She lives very close to, to my workplace. Anytime we're cleaning, even in the cold, she tell me, are you not tired? Yeah, I told her that is what my boss wants, so I have to do it, that is what I'm, paid, I'm being paid for. So I'm just saying this, just to enlighten us about the chicken place. It's not the way we think it is. The noise, the everything, if you're outside, you will never hear the noise. <coughs> we are in Camden. If you're outside, you never hear the noise. Last week, I still have a police guy that came in. He told me he never knew something like this exists here. Because you, you can never know, you can only see the sign. But when okay. you come in, then you see a lot of things inside. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Right. General comment. Keep, keep it brief. Not repetitions of the questions you drew. Thank you. Okay. okay, may I speak now? Thank you. Okay, I want to say that 45 years ago, I had the opportunity to work in an abattoir for a summer at my cousin's farm. Uh, they raised chickens, turkeys, and beef. And I can tell you the stink yes. and the noise of yes. the animals <clears throat> is still stuck in my head 45 years later. Okay, there's a reason that there are zoning laws 
this is an inappropriate use for that location. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Any other general comments? Yes. Good. Okay. Yes. okay. I'm only going to say this again because it was not clarified, but the number of chickens stand keeps up, changing. Can you stand oh. up, the number of chickens keeps changing. Um, so, and you're saying you don't know how many because it's a new business. So that could go anywhere from two chickens to 2,500 chickens. I mean, how do, you, you, you're not giving us any idea of anything, but you said the Woodland Avenue store had 700 something chickens. But that's a lot of chickens that you saying all these inspectors are coming and they have to, they only have like a two week shelf life. I mean, it's just, it's a lot of chickens, a lot of stench, a lot of noise. I don't know how you think that that's not going to be like stinking and noisy and a health risk with salmonella. We, that's, that's not nothing nobody really wanted. You couldn't find no place that wasn't near residential. Okay. <laughs> right. Thank you. That guy did. Would you want it in your backyard? I have a comment. You have a comment? Okay. Yeah. Um, State your name again. My name is Patu. I live in Colwyn, 576 South Fort Street. I've been living there for 18 years. And this is my brother who started working for him almost like a year. I had about a store from my friends who have been there. For years, I never been there, cause I only buy chicken from the supermarket. But I know people be buying hot chicken. I don't cook hot chicken. So when he start working for him, he brought some chicken to me one day. I don't, I didn't know it's gonna be clean. But when it came, I can't even tell that this chicken was live and it got that clean. I don't see anything on it. And all I can hear from my friends are, you never been there? You don't even know it's a place that they can sell chicken. I went and took my time, drive around Woodland, this is before he walked for him, and looking for this live chicken. And I keep asking him, is it a farm? No, it's not a farm, it's a store. They described the store to me until he started walking there. Then one day I drove by and I slowed down and start looking from the street, 68th Street, 67 going to 68. Then I was told it's between 68, 67 and 66. But that's when I knew this is a live chicken place, but I can't even see the chicken, neither to hear them. All I can see is the car here in the front and the next strip I took there, passing by, I saw the, the delivery truck. And the third time, my, son, my, my brother called me one day. He's, he stayed up at work late. And he called me. He said, we clean it. I said, clean it. All this time? He said, yes. But I didn't know. Like he said, they have times that they clean the whole store. And sometimes he would call me and say, we late today because he's busy. There's no chicken. The store is empty. I said, no chicken? No chicken. Not even a bit. No holiday. They don't have holidays. So the chicken is not enough for the people. And I can tell that why they having that kind of business going, because they secure the place. They provide people with a safety and healthy environment. Because people like me, I won't shop in nowhere that I don't trust as far as health wise even to the general supermarket. I go to the supermarket, I look inside where they park at this table out here. One day I went to shop, I saw a cake with molds on it. I went and called the cashier, I said, can you move those cakes? Just refer to it. Yes. Just keep it on the subject. Okay, I'm just saying, if you're talking about health-wise, those chicken environments, they have health. They clean the place, they secure the place. The chicken, you can't hear anything. You don't know even this place has shop. chicken. Mm -hmm. If it's a farm, if it's an open farm, which I was thinking, 
I think I will hear something until I pass by. It's like a bulletproof, you don't hear nothing. Okay. So All that's right. my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Very briefly, please. <laughs> what, is, what is this going to do to the property value? Who's going to buy a house around a poultry farm? I mean, Garvey's getting bad enough. I've already lost twenty, thirty thousand dollars my house in twenty-three years. What do you think a poultry place is going to do? I mean, it's bad enough we damn near got to give our house a way to get out. I've been here twenty-three years. My wife's born and raised in the house for fifty years. I remember the White Tower. My grandma and aunt ran that place. I remember the crossing guard booth in the middle of Main Street. My stepfather's worked for this borough for forty-seven years. Retired, Michael Good. I've seen this town blossom, blossom, and everything else. I remember going to five and nine, getting root beers. I've watched this place just go down the toilet quicker and quicker, and now you just want to put a produce place on it? Might as well put an RIP, rest in peace for this town. That's all. Thank you, sir. One day at one. One day at one. Since I had too many. I know, you met. I only said two things. Last week. Oh, um, yes, I'm like really bad souls. And I understand that you can start your business anywhere that's your prerogative. <coughs> but if you live in Falkroft, and doesn't Falkroft have an industrial park? Mm -hmm. And I know I'm not vast with the zoning laws of Delaware County. How come your business isn't in Falkroft Industrial Park? Now, in Philadelphia, as we, when I was growing up, I grew up here in Darby, the slaughterhouse was on that bridge down there. Slaughterhouses aren't around residential areas. Yeah, right. So why don't you take your business and Ma open it in this Ma don't comment. direct it to him, make your general comment. Or take his business or start his business in Falkroft in, in the industrial park. Okay, thank you. Arguments on behalf of the borough. I'll be brief. <laughs> Good evening. I have the opportunity to speak on behalf of the borough, the borough council. And I, why did the chicken cross the road? Because he wasn't following the zoning laws of Darby. <laughs> the applicant application today before you is an application for a zoning barrier. And I think that it's really important to see the forest through the trees. I'm not really going to talk about a chicken farm. I, I cross-examined the witness, and I walked him through the central business district uses permitted by right. He said this could be a fried chicken place. He said it could be a retail store. He said it could be an eating or drinking establishment. He said it could be a bank or a general service or repair shop. He said it could be a car used car garage. When you're looking at what is required for a zoning variance, it has to be an unnecessary hardship. Not for him, but for that particular location. The witness, there's no evidence that contradicts the fact that this can be used as a fried chicken shop as a walk-up restaurant. The witness said he agreed that that was the case. There's no testimony that the physical condition of the building makes it impossible for it to be anything other than a live poultry show. There's no testimony whatsoever that this, in fact, the only testimony that we hear is that the hardship has been created by the applicant. He has made a business decision to be in a live poultry business. He said something really important too, because I was concerned when I read it, whether or not he fit into the grocery store model. I thought this attorney who was, I respect a great deal would argue that, but it has to be a retail establishment. He testified he's not a retail store. He's a wholesale store. He's not a grocery store. I asked him, would it change the character of the neighborhood? He said, yes, it would. If it changes the character of the neighborhood, you can't grant the variance. If the variance is granted, it has to represent the minimum variance that would afford relief. They're asking for this building that has been for years under the old zoning code, a used truck sales place, to turn it into a live poultry place. I'm asking on behalf of the council or the borough, deny the variance because quite frankly they haven't met the requirement of the law. Doesn't matter how many chickens he has, doesn't matter what he does with the poop or the body, they didn't meet the law. 
your hands unfortunately are tied because they haven't put on evidence. In fact, they put on the borough's case by having their own witness admit that this building can be used for anything other than what they're using it for. Thank you. Thank you.